Hello viewers, in today's video, we will understand the techniques we as dentists and orthodontists use very commonly that is soldering and welding. So first of all, let us have a look at some of the terminologies that we will be using. So the first technique is soldering. So in this technique, we are joining the metal parts by use of a third metal which we also refer to as a filler metal. Now this particular filler metal has a lower fusion temperature than that of the metal parts that are being joined. The second technique is brazing. So this is similar to the soldering technique. We use a third metal to join two parts, but this is a term which we use for low temperature soldering technique. Third is welding. So in this process, we fuse two or more metal parts without using a third metal. So this can be done either by application of heat, pressure or both. Starting with the technique of soldering. So in order to join two surfaces by using a third metal, you need four materials. First is the solder, second is the flux, third is the anti-flux and fourth is of course the flame. The first component is solder or the third metal which we use to join the surfaces. It can be classified into a soft and a hard solder. Soft because they have a low fusion range below 260 degrees Celsius. These include the lead and tin alloys and are mainly used in the plumbing industry. Hard solders are the one which have higher fusion temperature and increased hardness and tensile strength. These include the silver and gold alloys which we commonly employ in dentistry. The silver solder which we usually employ contains silver as the main component which improves the wetting of the surfaces and also whitens the alloy. Copper improves the strength and lowers the fusion temperature. Zinc provides protection from oxidation at elevated temperatures during flaming while cadmium, tin and phosphorus in minor quantities improve the flow of solder and also lower the fusion temperature. It is extremely important that the fusion temperature of solder should be at least 50 to 100 degrees lower than the melting temperature of the alloys to be joined. So this allows for the effective flow of the solder between the joint spaces even before any melting of the surfaces to be joined takes place. Therefore, the soldering temperature for an orthodontic silver solder is between 620 to 665 degrees Celsius. Metals when exposed to the atmosphere have a tendency to form an oxide layer. The chromium component of the stainless steel forms a similar passivating oxide layer on the surfaces which makes the soldering process impossible. So flux is the compound that we employ in order to dissolve, remove or even prevent the formation of oxide while the process of soldering. Without this step, solders cannot wet the metal surfaces. Based on their primary purpose, the flux can be divided into three types. The type 1 functions as a surface protectant which coats the surface of the metal surface and prevents the entry of oxygen so that the oxides are not formed. The type 2 work as reducing agent in which they reduce any oxide that is present and therefore a clean metal surface is exposed. Type 3 is the solvent which dissolves any oxide that is present on the surface and it carries them away. So the flux that we use for orthodontic purpose are the type 3 or the solvent types. So irrespective of the types, the primary objective of the flux is to remove the oxides, promote the wetting and also to enhance the flow of the solder. Based on the other classification, a flux can be acidic, basic and neutral based on its pH and based on the boric component it can be either type 1 or the protective fluxes which are formed by low temperature glasses, the type 2 which are reducing fluxes and are used for low stability oxides including the copper oxides while type 3 are the fluoride fluxes. So as previously mentioned for orthodontic purposes, we use the solvent type of flux and if we classify it based on the boric component, these are the type 3 fluoride fluxes. So the constituents include potassium fluoride, boric acid, borax glass and potassium carbonate. So the fluoride component is added which dissolves the passivating surface layer which is formed by the chromium while the boric acid lowers the overall fusion temperature. 
The third component is the anti-flux. So as the name suggests, while flux increases the flow of the molten solder, the anti-flux limits it. One common example is graphite, which is also present in our pencils. The fourth component of soldering is the flame. So usually we employ a hydro solder machine which converts water into an oxy hydrogen fuel. You can also use your handheld blow torches for the purpose of soldering. So if we talk about the zones of flame, the first is the mixing zone which appears as an intensely blue colored zone. So this is the area where the oxy hydrogen gas and the air are mixing and hence the name the mixing zone. Second is the combustion zone. So this area contains partially burned gases or the fuel and is oxidizing in nature. So you need to make sure that whenever you are soldering, the area of the solder should be away from these two zones that is the mixing and the combustion zone. Third is the reducing zone. So this appears as a slight yellow ring of yellow flame. So this is the hottest part of the flame and is also the ideal area for soldering metal. Fourth is the oxidizing zone. So this is the coolest part of the flame and this is where all the gases have already burnt. Now let's have a look at the technique of soldering. What you see on your screens is the journal armamentarium that we use which includes a plaster or stone slab on which the surfaces are stabilized. So to begin with, we clean and prepare the surface and assemble the parts and then we apply flux to the parts that are to be joined. After this, we use the flame to activate the flux. Normally, the objective is to get the joint space red hot before the filler metal is introduced. So ideally, we need to maintain the flame in place until the metal has flowed completely. So this avoids any incorporation of oxygen and the subsequent formation of oxide layer. So also, we keep the flame for a moment longer in this particular area because this allows for the flow and the separation of flux from the joint space. This is followed by quenching. So quenching in cold water serves two purposes. That is first is the rapid cooling of the area and second is that it removes any strain that is formed in that area during the soldering. The next technique is welding which joins two or more metal parts without using a third or filler metal. So this can be done by the application of heat, pressure or both. Welding can be classified into cold welding and hot welding. In cold welding, pressure application is done. So the example include cold foil in which hammering is utilized. Second type of welding is hot welding. So this can be achieved either by using a heat source, which is usually oxyacetylene flame, in which fusion welding is done where the parts are melted and joined, but there is no application of pressure. The examples include gas welding and laser welding. The second type of hot welding is by the application of high amperage electricity in which the parts are heated and pressed, but they are not melted. And the example is the spot welding. The various types of welding are spot welding, pressure welding, laser welding and laser micro welding. Given on your screens is a spot welder which you will normally find in any dental operatory. So if we talk about the components of the circuit, first is the electric transformer. So the role is to reduce the voltage to a level that is safe to handle. The second component are the copper electrodes. So you place the surfaces between these two pieces because this is where the current is conveyed to the metal surfaces. Third is the pressure mechanism which allows the pieces to be pressed into contact. And finally, we have a timer switch in which we tap in order to complete the circuit of the transformer. Pressure welding as mentioned previously is a type of cold welding as it does not require any heat application. The next type of welding employs light application by simulated emission of radiation that is laser for stronger and precise joining. Also laser micro welding delivers an energy of 20 joules per pulse for 6 milliseconds at a length of 1.06 microns of a wire. So the reason for understanding these techniques include the multiple applications, for example, making the bands, attaching various components to the bands using welding, then soldering various appliances, for example, transpalatal arch, the lingual arch and other space management appliances using soldering, which we will use in our clinical practice. So that was all for today's session. 
I really hope you understood the concepts and now you will be able to apply these clinically.